programming brought to you by AWI Networks, Smarter Internet. Thanks for joining St. George News at 8. I'm Scott Beadle. A high-ranking member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints will not be attending this weekend's general conference. A church statement announced that Elder Robert D. Hales, one of the church's apostles, has been hospitalized. He's being treated for pulmonary and other ailments. Doctors said he should not participate. The 85-year-old has been a member of the church's Quorum of 12 Apostles since 1994. They form the top governing body under the president and two counselors. Hales previously missed the general conference in April of 2011 due to health issues. The general conference is held twice a year and will take place in Salt Lake City this weekend. A 24-year-old man allegedly told police he had burglarized 10 to 15 vehicles in the Little Valley area of St. George. St. George police received numerous reports of residential and burglary reports on September 10th. The reports of stolen watches, wallets, and other items Police eventually tracked a stolen credit card to Colton Lee Vincent when he allegedly tried to make a purchase at a smoke shop where IDs are required. During a subsequent search of a relative of Vincent's, police say they found drugs and paraphernalia. Vincent was arrested several times over a matter of days on various charges. The Washington City Council adopted an active transportation plan Wednesday, which aims to create more pedestrian and bicycle-friendly spaces across the city. The council got a preview of that plan during an August work meeting. Tim Miller of Alta Planning and Design says about 7% of Washington County residents walk or bike to their destinations, while the rest use a car. The city has more than 94 miles of trails and shared roadways, but the hope is to grow that to more than 220 miles. One of the main priorities of the plan is to better connect those trails and bike-friendly roads within the city. It would also include separated bike lanes, buffered bike lanes, shared use paths, and bicycle boulevards. The plan was approved unanimously by the City Council. The White House and Congressional Republicans are proposing to overhaul the nation's tax code, but it's not exactly clear yet exactly what all those changes would be. Massive tax cuts are proposed, but how they would be funded has some in both parties concerned. Gloria Riviera has a story. President Trump unveiled his plan for tax reform by calling for Democrats to join Republicans in support. Today, tweeting, Democrats don't want massive tax cuts. How does that win elections? Great reviews for tax cut and reform bill. The White House says the plan is revolutionary, insisting it streamlines the system and benefits the middle class. We're going to make sure that nearly every American can file their taxes by themselves on a single sheet of paper. The details are forthcoming, but the new proposal calls for slashing the tax on corporations, now 35 percent to 20 percent. For individuals and families, reducing the numbers of tax brackets from seven to just three. And doubling the standard deduction. For families, that would mean no income tax whatsoever on the first $24,000 of income. Trump is proposing eliminating the estate tax, something that is only paid on estates valued at more than $5.5 million for individuals, $11 million for couples. As for that flat 20% cut for corporations, 20 is my number, so I'm not negotiating that number. Trump's economic advisor could not confirm whether any middle class families could possibly pay more. I can't guarantee anything. Democrats are skeptical. Don't call it reform, because it's not reform. It's just more of the same trickle down economics. The White House is hoping to get the new tax plan approved by Congress before the end of the year. And after getting what he called high marks for the relief efforts in Texas and Florida after hurricanes hit, President Trump is facing some mounting criticism for the response to the devastation in Puerto Rico. He is planning to visit the island next Tuesday. Gloria Riviera has the latest. Crisis in Puerto Rico is growing more dire by the day. Vital aid is stranded at the country's main port, 
food, water, medical supplies sitting in cargo containers. Even more frustrating, the massive amount of donations from people in the U.S. can't even get to the island. Completely unacceptable. I mean, there are people in Puerto Rico that are in trouble, devastated, and uh, they need these resources ASAP. An obscure U.S. shipping law called the Jones Act has been seen as a hindrance to speeding up relief efforts. The law forbids foreign ships from transporting goods from one point to another in U.S. territory. Under pressure this morning to do more to help the hurricane-ravaged island, President Trump waived the law. But his comments yesterday raised eyebrows when he suggested the interests of shipping companies who were opposed to the waiver were being considered. We have a lot of shippers and a lot of people and a lot of uh, people that work in the shipping industry that don't want the Jones Act lifted. Russell Honore, the lieutenant general who oversaw Katrina relief on CNN, blasted the delay. And the president has shown again he don't give a damn about poor people, you don't give a damn about people of color, and the SOB that rides around in Air Force One is denying services needed by the people of Puerto Rico. A full week after Hurricane Maria hit the U.S. territory, only 4% of the island has electricity, only about half drinkable water. 80% of telecommunications are down, and the governor is now warning the country is running out of cash. It's been hell. It's been absolute hell. The shipping industry lobbied against waiving the Jones Act, saying more ships could overwhelm the system. Department of Homeland Security says that waiver will be good for 10 days. Meteorologist Kim Walker has your Southern Utah forecast coming up right after this. The weather tonight is brought to you by AWI Networks, smarter internet. Welcome back, everyone. It was a beautiful day out there. Temperatures climbed up to around 80 degrees in St. George. We're going to gradually warm up tomorrow, and the winds will also pick up as well. But then another shot of cool air will come late in the weekend, so we're going to stay sunny and pretty nice by next week. So we are going to see those temperatures drop down uh, a little bit cooler than what we saw today. Highs today uh, in St. George, again, it was 80 degrees. In Mesquite, it was 86 degrees. In Hurricane, it was 80 degrees and cooler in Cedar City at 66 degrees so uh, it was pretty pleasant out there as we move into tonight temperatures will drop down into the upper 50s and lower 60s except in Cedar City where we will see lows around 40 degrees so here's your day planner in Cedar City temperatures will start off a little bit chilly 43 degrees and then by noon 54 our high will be around 73 degrees of course with dry air in place those temperatures warm up quite rapidly but still not too bad 72 degrees mostly sunny conditions and the winds will be light throughout the day. Here's a look at your forecast for St. George. Temperatures will be around 60 degrees as we start off the day and then by noon climbing to around 63, but we warm up quite rapidly to around 85 degrees in the afternoon before we drop back down to around 81 degrees. But again, we're going to see plenty of sunshine and so we don't have any precipitation to talk about, but there is a low pressure system that will be just to our south tomorrow. It will bring the chance for rain well to our east, but we're going to be on the back side of it. So we're going to continue with the dry conditions and it's associated with sinking air and with sinking air. We're not going to see a lot of clouds. So therefore we're going to see lots of sunshine. In addition to that, because of the vicinity of the low, we are going to see those winds pick up. So it's going to be a little bit breezy for tomorrow, but otherwise it's going to be warm and we're going to see that gradual warm up for this weekend. But if you have any photos out there, please send it to us at KCSG.com or just on our social media. As we move into tomorrow, temperatures will warm up to around 73 degrees in Cedar City. Not bad there in Newcastle, 66 degrees. Enterprise, 76 degrees, mostly sunny, and it will be nice, but the winds will start to pick up about 10 to 15 miles per hour, but at least we'll see lots of sunshine. A little bit warmer down to the south, 85 degrees for St. George in Littlefield, around 89 degrees. Mesquite, we're looking at a high around 90 degrees. So here's a look at your extended forecast temperatures staying in the 70s as we make our way through the weekend and then those numbers start to uh, cool down a little bit. 65 degrees for the high on Monday, 67 on Tuesday and I think we'll stay in the 60s for the most part. Plenty of sunshine for next week. Here's a look at your forecast for St. George. Temperatures gradually warm 
warm up to around 85 degrees tomorrow, 87 on your Saturday. And it will be breezy, but then another shot of cool air comes in early next week, and those temperatures will start to drop down into the 70s by the middle part of the week. But plenty of sunshine, just mm. beautiful weather. Like I think a, a lot of people are. Ahead. Yeah, like, I think a lot of people are going to be jealous. Thanks, Kim. All right. We'll be back in a moment. Police officer in southern Maine came across this skunk with a McFlurry cup firmly attached to its head. Not exactly your typical beat call, and one that could really stink if that scared skunk decides to go with its instincts. But Officer David McKinnon was apparently undeterred and did remove that cup very bravely. Thanks for watching. Have a good evening.